problem. While Thomas was away at York, Percy looked after Annie and Clarabelle and took most of Thomas's trains. Daisy ran the fast one, which connected with Gordon's Express at the junction. This made her feel very important. It shows how the fat controller depends on me, she told the others. Toby was in charge of the goods trains and ran down to the harbour. He enjoyed that. His stone trains were dealt with by Mavis, the diesel belonging to the quarry company. One day, snow on the other railway had delayed the train from London, so Gordon's Express was late too. While Daisy was waiting for him at the junction, the blizzard spread across Sodor. Huge white flakes whirled all around, and her driver was worried. Daisy wasn't. What fun, she said to herself. The other engines don't like snow, but I think it's pretty. And I've got the rails to guide me, so it won't give me any trouble. Her driver was not so confident. Daisy hasn't got the weight that a steam engine has, the driver told the guard. She can't push her way through, and we all know how Thomas got stuck, don't we? <laughs> He's told us often enough, laughed the guard. At last Gordon arrived, complaining about engines who were frightened of a bit of snow. It's no problem, boasted Daisy. A few flimsy flakes can't stop me. Quite right, approved Gordon. Well done. But I'm late. I haven't time to gossip. He puffed importantly away. Daisy started confidently. But as they turned towards the valley, the sky darkened and then was completely blotted out by whirling snowflakes. Oh! exclaimed Daisy as the wind blew them into her face. I don't like this. Neither do I, said her driver. I can't see where we're going. They stopped at the next signal box and Daisy's driver went to talk to the signalman. He came back looking glum. There are deep drifts ahead, I'm afraid, he told the passengers. We can't get through. The signalman says Daisy must take you back to the last station, he went on. We'll get you home from there somehow. If we're lucky, the passengers said to themselves, they went. Before they had gone far, Daisy began to feel ill. She coughed, hiccuped, and stopped. Help, she wheezed. I can't breathe properly. The snow has blocked your air intake, I expect, said her driver. He cleared it, but it was soon clogged again. Daisy could go no further. She felt like bursting into tears. The driver got down again and trudged back to the signal box to telephone for help. Daisy felt more miserable every minute. Even her driver, when he came back, couldn't cheer her up. They've promised to rescue us, he said, but goodness knows how they'll do it. They waited and waited, but no help came. The snow drifted higher and was soon piled all round Daisy. Suddenly she heard a whirring noise from behind. Oh no, she thought, not another blizzard. Daisy was right, it wasn't another blizzard. It was Harold the helicopter. He dropped hot drinks for the passengers, and when they were feeling better, he lifted them one by one into himself with what Daisy could only describe as a sort of chair thing. The passengers went to the airfield, where they were looked after until they could reach home. Harold couldn't help Daisy. It was a cold, miserable week before Toby rescued her doesn't think snow is so pretty now.